week on Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, we finally get an official Google Drive client for Linux. And you know I'm already kind of kidding because Google would never do that. But we have another one to play around with. And the Matrix wants you to take the glue pill. It's kind of like the blue pill, but it's decentralized with a single point of failure. There's a new Ubuntu version out, which, short of a tech demo, brings business as usual. And Powerade wants... 400 or 4100 bucks for a motherboard just so you can't run any of your usual software and it's katie's birthday and they have a present for us uh, so there's a new chat protocol in town but should we care about the old one instead I, I don't know, man. Is it um, based on IRC? If it's coming from you, it probably is, and he'll love it. But um, Vince Stone, here on the East Coast, joined um, by my partner in crime on the West Coast. Why, well, hello. Your West Coast of Europe. Europe. Yes. <laughs> He's one of those weird Europeans, but from the West Coast of in L.A., Mr. Hollywood himself. He's not hello. even French. He's just a really good actor that we've hired. <laughs> Macho Commandant. But lads, let's just get right into it this week, because 16.10, you can finally upgrade that 1604 old sauce. <laughs> yeah, it's totally old. It's the Yakety Yak. It's officially been released. Uh, it was actually released last week on Thursday. And the only really noteworthy things that this version brings are the Unity 8 and Mirror previews. Short of that, there's really nothing else to see here. It's just like the um, update to the newer sauce. So you get Nautilus 320. They could have totally put in 322. <laughs> what else, man? You wallpaper. Come on. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm upgrading right now. <laughs> well, there's always that big kerfuffle around the uh, default Ubuntu wallpapers and how nice they're going to be. And some people who attempt to submit wallpapers they did not create. That's always been an issue, and it will probably keep on being. So, Strider, you uh, you seem to like Unity. Tell uh, us about it. Yeah, even after, if I don't run it at the moment, I'm using Nope Shell. I'm, I'm still using Unity on the, the laptop. And yeah, there aren't a lot of new features in this uh, 1610, and I have no, no problem with that. I mean, all I want is a recent kernel, so it's got 4.8, so that's the newest stuff. I want um, a recent version of GTK, so they, they got 320, so that's good. And they got a couple of bug fixes in Unity, uh, so, which I use on my laptop, as I said. So yeah, I mean, I, it's the only release that I've, I've still haven't installed, like before it was released. <laughs> I haven't installed a beta or anything. So I guess I'll do the updates today on my desktop and my laptop. Well, there should be, well, there. this is the first release that uh, Martin Wimpress from Ubuntu Mate, which I am currently running, uh, He this was the first actual Ubuntu release that he was thoroughly involved with. He's actually been working with the Ubuntu team for a couple of weeks now on Unity 8, so maybe it'll work better? Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm uh, speaking on behalf of everyone still running 14.04 LTS. Uh, ha have fun with your own stable systems. Um, <laughs> we, we, we look forward to your progress reports. But um, if you like KDE instead of the uh, Unity, what's this all about? Yes, man? it's uh, their birthday, so they are now they are now 20 years old, and to celebrate that, they have just re-released KD1 and it's running like great on Fedora 25. The <laughs> and I am installing this <laughs> after the show, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I won't be installing this, but I mean it's kind of neat. They they haven't done a lot of changes in the source code, uh, but they they did move away from other tools mm -hmm. and migrated to CMake. Because I mean, who wants to deal with other tools, right? <laughs> uh, and I've looked at the screenshots, and yeah, it looks pretty good. Uh, I mean, if you compare it to what existed at that time, I mean, Windows 9. Was yeah, Windows 9, it looks right? about on par. Uh, um, someone really needs to create a PPA for this, because I am lazy. <laughs> 
Yeah, that looks about right. I mean, I started my adventure in KDE land well before the 1.0 release. And um, yeah, very familiar. That was uh, <laughs> the gears, man. The gears. Nowadays, it looks a lot like. Uh, when you didn't have an icon for anything, uh, not, not you use these gears. Uh, man, did you remember what each of these gears did, too? That was. Um, <laughs> Enlightenment. It looks a lot like uh, what enlightenment looks nowadays. Hmm. Guess that's not a coincidence. Well, I, I don't know. I'm unlike enlightenment. It might actually be functional, man. <laughs> then again, that's not really that hard. <laughs> Low bar. <laughs> hey, I am not hating on enlightenment. Every quarter I probably go through is like, is it possible <laughs> to use it? Then I throw three X sessions at it and it implodes and it's like, yeah, I guess not. <laughs> so... <laughs> That's pretty cool, man, but we do have a little bit of VR news this week, right? Oh, yes, because the Steam Dev Days were last week, uh, October tw uh, 12th and 13th. So one of the things they had were was the Linux demo for um, the Steam VR. So there are, there are a bunch of people Mac actually Mac. working on OS VR, and the uh, Collabora... You may know him from such other projects like, uh, I don't know, LibreOffice, uh, GStreamer. Mm. There are a couple others, and they are actually working to like create, basically create right now what they're doing is try to get um, the Lighthouse sensors working. Because it does have the uh, room experience, but only through IMU. It can't use the lighthouse sensors yet, so it's only reliant on the uh, on the headset itself, and it doesn't really work. It gets detected as it should, and you get basic functionality at this point. Now, I was reading through this. All right, all right, this this is cool. I don't not really into VR, but okay, this is nice. And then distribution OS VR Vive Libre is available on the Arch user repository, and there goes any interest I had. Out the window. I don't know what um, you have against uh, Arch, man. Um, no, 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 well, what's the fun in getting the lighthouses to working? Won't the YouTube videos be infinitely more entertaining if people are just smashing into random stuff while testing this out? <laughs> yeah, I guess it would be. And this is kind of a big deal that this is coming from Colabora because they are one of the major actors in a lot of Linux projects. So you mentioned LibreOffice, you mentioned uh, Jisumer, but they're like, they contribute to the kernel, to, to, to Wayland, to Pulse Audio. So this is a, a big team working on this project. So it's likely to, to end up somewhere, to some, somewhere working. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll have to check that out like in a couple of months if they have made any progress. And I bet they, they will have... Maybe uh, maybe MT within Chat Realm will be able to test that out. No, I think it'll be good, especially if they open source um, all the hardware specifications for the Vive. Then we can corner Richard Stallman and someone can tape down his katanas and we could put one on him and see what he thinks about it. It would be pretty. <laughs> uh, unless HTC goes out of business, I don't see that happening. Nah. All right. <laughs> well, how, how do you say it, um, Matthew? Magnifosi? Mm -hmm. So... Magnific we got a new version of um, of Atom that was released recently. Uh, so Atom, the text editor from from GitHub, and it's basically the, the first Electron app. So we covered ah, there's our Electron app of the week. There it is. Yes, it's uh, the, it's the OG Electron app. So it was even Electron was even called Atom Core at some point. I think. Um, Basically, a couple new features with this version. So it's a 1.11. Uh, they got telemetry permissions and some improvements of in image view. The thing is, you can't really get the, the dev file or the, the RPM file on the, the official websites uh, for this version. You, you will get redirected to an older version. But mm. if you get to the beta, then you can download 1.12 beta, uh, which will have like, much more improvements. It will be based on the Electron 1.3 framework uh, and a bunch of other fixes. So yeah, I mean, this is quite quite a good editor. You just have to plug in some add a Vim plugin 
Yeah, to you, you, mis- you mispronounced Emacs, man. <laughs> <laughs> No, the big thing about Atom was always the GitHub integration because that was what it was built for is to work on several Git projects and you could actually just push the necessary stuff that you had changed back to the Git repo. And yeah, they do, like uh, Strider said, Electron was created for Atom. Hmm. And then they noticed that a bunch of people were asking uh can we have that pretty please so they uh they gave him the the sauce as it were and now it's powering a multitude of different applications which it should, probably shouldn't mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well chat protocols um yeah people have problems with webrtc they're not really but uh matrix.org all of this is going to be in the show notes but I'm kind of looking over this. Like, so what's this about? It's like, well, you know, it's about getting everything together. Let's decentralize group chat. Uh, the signaling of WebRTC audio video so you can talk through different applications and Internet of Things, which is already dead on arrival. How does it work? I don't know. But they've tried to draw a bunch of dots that really hate colorblind people. Strider, what do you think? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the true decentralization, decentralization is having so many protocols uh, that you can't basically <laughs> communicate with each other. And I think they're, they're aware of this thing, because if you click uh, on the Riot link, which is one of their clients for this protocol, you have the relevant XQCD comic, mm-hmm. which is about the 15 competing standards. Just <laughs> Let's just add another one to that. At least they're self-aware. Yeah, they are self-aware of the, this fact. Um, the one thing that they seem to differentiate from the one the ones we've talked about in the last couple of weeks uh, is that they, they are targeting to be a replacement for uh, RSC and Slack instead of being a Skype replacement. Uh, uh, so that's I, I, I don't know, man. Who's going to replace Slack? I mean, that that is you, you <laughs> talk about replacing yeah, the Slack. incumbent, and it's like. <laughs> Businesses use Slack now, man. I, I mean, I like the work they're doing, but do you, is it for not? Uh, I mean, the thing is, is Slack is closed source. This is open source. Or, mm-hmm. I mean, I'm okay with that. I mean, I, I've always had a problem with Slack being a closed platform. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, yeah. But speaking of IRC, well, it's still a thing. No, it's not. Never heard of it. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, we I use it all the time. And, Lies. Uh, Are you talking about those two for... lines right below our lower thirds there? Uh, <laughs> yes, that one. That is but ICQ. Getting... <laughs> <laughs> aim. Aim, it's aim. Yes. <laughs> we have a group chat. But, but the problem with IRC, it's getting pretty old. I mean, it hasn't been updated in like years. Maybe Are you kidding, man? IRC was old when I was a teen, when we were a teenager, Strider. Years old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's all, always has been that way. I mean, it hasn't been there hasn't been any updates for it. And actually, that's going to change. And a lot of people are working on a new RSC protocol. This this and does not make this makes baby flying spaghetti monster cry. Client avatars. <laughs> it's a necessary it's, bandwidth right there. It's nice that it can be a thing. Why, why are they trying to bring that newfangled 1989 stuff on me, man? <laughs> uh, what, uh, they have avatars, but sh- sure. But they are also, they're also going to provide better security, uh, make it easier to for users to register their account because right now it's kind of awkward mm-hmm. have to to send like messages to Nixerv and so on. Uh, they are going to bring better history handling and a bunch of other stuff so this will be a nice update and it's right about time they they bring that update because otherwise they would fall behind like slack for example i don't know man you you said a lot of people are kicking in on this right freenode wechat hexchat znc and everybody's kind of rocking out to this party big names all the big names in rc are, are there working on this uh strangely there are there's no mrc but mm-hmm. every, everyone else is here, you know, that uh, like shots on ZNC. Um, so it's likely to head somewhere soon. 
So um, all I've heard is we want to remove the IRC litmus test and just let anyone come in and start chatting, right? Actually, one of the things I noticed was that Freenode is already using at least the SASL encryption for registration and authentication. Mm -hmm. Because whenever I start XChat nowadays, it's like logging you in through SASL. Oh, that's new. Right. I am kind of interested in the security aspects because a lot of people over the years now is like, why don't you have your own IRC server? Which I just laugh manically and tell them to saw it off. Because, <clears throat> yeah, I don't need that nightmare administration. Um, but, yeah, something like that. It looks neat. And What's the name again? IRCV3.net. I, I don't know where the V2, V2 went, but uh, <laughs> maybe, it was, maybe it's a current Don't one. question it, Strider. Don't question it. Just right. go along with it. <laughs> <laughs> they just like the number three, but we like the number 89 because that's how many Patreons are helping to bring us, well, bring you this show. That's kind of how it rock and rolls. We're currently knocking out 160 wet sneaky caches. If you'd like to help us out, head over to patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. We got some wicked cool rewards over there for your time and trouble. We are coming up for crossing the streams. We're at 160, needing that 175. That will be two more live streams a week, so we'll be able to prototype new shows. Um, Pedro giggling for 30 minutes. I think that would, might, might be a good one. And <laughs> Actual game playthroughs, like recurring on Twitch. Yeah. Yeah, that you, you can schedule as opposed to, is like, wait, wait, wait. I didn't know you guys were live. It's like, we, we didn't 30 minutes either. I mean, it just kind of <laughs> organically happened. And I was like, you know what? I'll just stream it anyway. But, um, yeah, we want to thank some people this week. Yeah, two of them. Jolly Man and Dark Solace. Thank you very, very, very much. Mm -hmm. These guys and all the rest, well, uh, the other 87 patrons we have, currently have access to... to, 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 to it's got to be over 100 now. Uh, it's... Oh, where is it? Oh, there it is. 105 patron-only posts yes and one of those is i think a very important one because we have finished our trying again series oh yes we have yes and i guess we should and point out that if you want early access to the uncut for oh, yeah. gamecast weekly and this show you'll get it three days before everyone else and that'd be great no uh, we definitely did that and we are currently playing jordan's favorite level in our left for brad <laughs> series so we can't tell you much about that but uh you're gonna be um, well informed about that level by the time we get to ah, it. Ah, yes. The mm -hmm. F-Box. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's quit shilling. <laughs> Indeed. So. Uh, that Duke boy done went and made himself some Linux Against Humanity. Um, Ooh, that's Cards Against Humanity with a Linux theme, right? Yeah, it's pretty cool, man. Linux Against Humanity. It's a Linux theme expansion pack for Cards Against Humanity. Licensed under Creative Commons, BYNCSA. All right, same as Cards Against Humanity. What does this bring to the table, though? Um, has there well, jokes uh, about Richard Stallman's beard? <laughs> it's they're not very funny. I have to uh, probably bring that up. Yeah, it does have Richard Stallman's beard. That's like the very first one. Linus Torvald swearing at you. Tux the Penguin, Debian, some guy with a neck beard. Open Susie, Ubuntu, Fedora, Slackware on floppies. Huh? <laughs> that one might have been you, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> and the um pseudo app get install blank <laughs> yeah it definitely needs um at least the original set of cards against humanity to make this even remotely funny but yeah it's know, there it's, it's a thing you you love it don't you um i mean there we have to, we, we usually play, when you play this, we play online. Mm -hmm. So, right now, if you go on the GitHub repo, it's just a bunch of PDF files. Uh, so, we can't use that for the, the Linux, uh, the, the online version, which is pretend you're Xizi. And that would be nice to have. That would be very nice that, to have. In fact, makes me a very sad panda because if you already have access to the show notes, you know that's what we're doing for the after shows on Saturday. <laughs> yep. But so maybe there's a way I, to have this. Yeah, man. Oh, it's a good project. Somebody will get on it. They'll add that in. You know, you can add your own cards. Check it out. Um, good work. I mean, if it's something you dig. But um, okay. Uh, did anyone not see this? happening yeah it was bound to happen i mean they're free they're free certificates what 
was anyone else expecting. But according to the uh, Electronic Frontier Foundation, um, someone made a claim. Uh, uh, it was actually W3 Techs uh, who made the claim that Let's Encrypt was the third biggest certificate handler currently out there on the World Wide Web. And the FF was like, but they're free certificates. How can that be? So they did uh, some of their own uh, statistics and they looked at some data and they looked at everything and they came to the conclusion that, yes, Let's Encrypt, in terms of raw certificates, they're number one. But if you look at the traffic generated by like the big hitter websites like your Facebooks and what have you's, um, Let's Encrypt is actually only number three on the list. So now one thing to keep in mind, although in raw in terms of raw certificates, uh, Let's Encrypt is the number one, those also account, uh, that number one comes with the caveat that um, it also accounts for duplicate or inactive certificates. So keep that in mind. They actually go, they do a pretty good job of actually explaining how they did it the counting and everything else so you should totally check it out and if you have a website and you're still not using https shape on you and go to let's encrypt right now mm -hmm. yeah but uh, i think there's room for the the traditional cas and let's encrypt and that they don't target the same audience initially the the certif ssl and the certificates and all of this were like, targeted at large websites and large entities which had a lot of money and this is why like, the certificates were expensive because the, the people who needed them well, they were pay. the power company where else were you going to go and they all pretty basically much basically had the same set price point we were talking about this before the shows and started i was like of course they're free uh, and even me you know you'd be like hey i got a let's encrypt I'm like great for what website I'm like website what's that but I mean, it's free because <laughs> people will flock out and did that. I immediately signed up for because we were in the beta program and before it was, uh, you know, open for everyone else. And but then we started seeing some of the this is in Genesis. Now, this is before the super wicked cool scripts for automating cycling the certificates, you know, every 20 seconds. I'm exaggerating. Don't send me hate mail on that existed. And we're like, oh, that's going to be a nightmare fuel. Then we upgraded our um server and they were like here have a free ssl thing so we didn't mess with it mm -hmm. uh yeah I mean, I mean now now everyone kind of understands why it's important to have encryption and having a self-signed certificate is no good uh, whatsoever because you get this big fat fat warning on pretty much <laughs> yeah. every browser mm -hmm. so it's very hard like to if you have if you have one p people will just go away so that's let's encrypt initiative. It's really a good thing to have, and there's very little overlap between like the traditional ones and the let's encrypt. So I mean, if there was uh, a lot a lot of overlap, um, I think the traditional CAs would get really aggressive against let's encrypt. But I mean, so far we haven't seen. Oh, oh wait, 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 have you forgotten about the um, Let's Encrypt uh, law, lawsuit, it, man, already? I mean, there, uh, there was this, this <laughs> thing, but it was not... <laughs> oh, it was deal. just little, little thing. No, no, right? Yeah. All right. Well, they did sort it out pretty quick. As mm -hmm. far as judicial things go, good on them. Well, I mean, you're but... just seeing the ecosystem change because everything was set, you know, a little bit... No, I'm not going to say collusion, um, <laughs> but, you know... It's like, yeah, you know how much you're going to be paying for SSL certs. And, you know, I love disruptive technologies. And yeah. this absolutely does what it did what it said on the tin. But power. Oh, yeah. I'm still totally 100% okay with Let's Encrypt taking over the market. Go. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing I am not entirely sure why it exists is the Talos Secure Workstation. Which is a, uh, right now, it's only a crowdfunding campaign for a motherboard, uh, which will run um, an IBM processor. Now, they say that Power8 exists right now, and it's a thing you can get, but you can't really 
unless you're willing to fork over uh, 4100 bucks for a motherboard which is basically aiming to bring PPC back as a platform. Now, I, just as much as the next guy, hate Intel's market dominance. I do. But why would you go into a RISC-V based architecture? Because that's what the processor is going to be. It's going to be something else different at power eight, but it's based on risk five. Um, why why not just pay AMD for the x86 64 license and do something to compete on the same ground? Uh, cool factor, man. Cool yeah, factor. Man. Uh, it's the absolute neat <laughs> factor. I looked at this before I I, uh, I just saw the title. Another Vin was like, we don't need this. Another Vin was like, but we want it. And that was absolutely a thing. But hey, man, this is coming out of the gate. No proprietary blobs, you know, for firmware. And yeah. that's definitely a good thing. But but I'm going to agree with you if you'd be quiet long enough, Pedro. Um, <laughs> if you thought the migration from x86 to x86-64 was rough, man, it, granted, it was no um, Itanic experience, if anyone oh, remembers yeah. that. <laughs> This is going to be a bit tricky because there was a part in the mid 2000s where I just went sun crazy, you know, ultra fives, ultra tens, and we were just playing around the house. Everything was on the Saber architecture, 64 bit. Spark. Yeah, Spark, man. It was a good mm. time. But even that year, maybe a year and a half, I learned that just getting some of the basic stuff up and running is not fun. Uh, good times were not had by all. And. This is a more expensive way of getting around to that same conclusion, I think. Mm -hmm. And this seems to be a very powerful architecture, just like as the name implies. Well, uh, as far as a IBM claims, yes. Yeah, and it's already a thing in server-grade hardware, uh, just like the this IBM cell was <laughs> a few w. years ago. <laughs> so been... uh, you can you can already buy motherboards for this architecture, like from Tyon, for mm -hmm. example. But the, uh, the cell on this is this is going to fit in your regular um, computer case. Right? Yeah, the the, the difference it is that it, this is an ATX motherboard, and this is made for uh, workstations. The funny thing is, they mention running AAA games on it. I don't think there are any triple game, uh, triple A games that run on that architecture. Um, I mean, they could run a PS3 emulator pretty easily because it's pretty much the same thing. But uh, games, I don't know. I mean, I mean it's the the, the um, workstation uh, ships with Debian by mm -hmm. default. Um, pretty sure uh, everything in Debian will run. I mean, out if you're just box. looking to get at the MOBO, you. If this does get funded, uh, four thousand one hundred what stinky dollars? Um, see, I was gonna uh, uh, listen, man. I was like, hey, man, maybe I'll get the desktop edition, seventy five hundred bucks. And I saw the desktop environment defaults, Katie. I decided not to fund the project. Just <laughs> <laughs> now, the big thing here really is the ATX form factor. It is. It's going to fit in whatever case you happen to have laying around, and you can you actually get PCIe. Uh, ports, so you can plug in a compute graphics card if you have one, or even a regular old desktop variant. Mm -hmm. Why? I don't know, because there are no drivers for it. So, <laughs> I don't know. It's, mm. No? The thing, no. the thing is that they want almost $4 million. Oh, come so on. No, 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 you're exaggerating. Too, they only want $3.7 million. <laughs> oh, yeah, I said almost, almost. So, and it's just for a very exotic motherboard. Uh, a motherboard well, maybe, that. Which, costs you know, 4K. it might panic some people when they see that number, but I will give them kudos because, you know what? That's a realistic number. That is not, oh, look, they only need this much. And you're like, oh, look, you're never going to receive that product. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. They oh. may also be trying to do what Canonical tried to do with that Ubuntu phone on uh, Indiegogo. Oh, you Which mean they, um, gauge market and whether or not yes. people wanted to buy it, then realize people didn't want to buy it and still made it? Precisely. <laughs> <That one. laughs> All right, what's up next? Oh. Uh, it's great. No, man, is it delicious? It, it looks delicious. <laughs> oh, thanks, Beer, for bringing this up 
Um, that's a smarter way to start things. Skillable hardware. Okay, they got dev kits, man. Prototype boards. You can pick them up for sixteen bucks if you just want the SOC. I think you can. Yep, you can get a uh, R eight SOC, two hundred fifty six megs of DDR three, one package, giggity four six. What stinky caches in any quantity? I think that's great. No NDA required. So listen, man. I mean, if you want to set out and prototype, you know, your own Weasel Spanker nine thousand. <laughs> Pretty cheap way to do it and to go about it. Um, you know, I know somebody out there is currently planning to base, you know, one of your Internet of Thing devices on, you know, a, one of these critters. Don't. Seriously, <laughs> IoT is going to fail harder than virtual reality already has. So just let that one go. Um, neat piece of kit. Uh, I don't have a full disclosure, but I will say when they first announced the um, pocket chip, what was it, $9? Nine bucks. Right. Yeah. I was like, they can't make that for nine dollars and sell it. And yeah, um, not unfortunately, but fortunately, about seven months after that, I was like, they made that for nine dollars and sold it. So you <laughs> they know, managed to because right. when they first announced it, you couldn't get the necessary parts for anywhere lower than nine bucks. In fact, it was more expensive. So they had to sell those first few at a loss. Hmm. But, I mean, the big yeah. thing about this is it's, and they have a bunch of modules that they've already sourced to work for it. I mean, it's a, getting a starting point. You know, you're going to be yeah. adding stuff to it. It is um, hipster breadboarding. <laughs> I'm not going to talk about that. But um, have a look, Strider. Do you have any thoughts on it? Uh, yeah, and this is a very neat board. Um, I kind of want one. Even <laughs> I, I, don't, I wouldn't know what to do with it. I'm that going to contact them after the show and see if they'll include that quote on their little, like little wall on their main page. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that seems to be a good setting point. Yeah, I would. We don't know what to do with it. Uh, no, it <laughs> seems to be very powerful, and I think you can do a lot with like one gigahertz CPU. Yeah. Uh, we saw like an oh. overpriced uh, workstation with RISC architecture. This is the exact opposite, where you can get quite a powerful board and mm -hmm. very yeah. cheap this is uh, actually more powerful than the original raspberry pi the raspberry yeah. the original one had 800 megahertz arm v4 v3 i can't remember one of those uh but yeah you get uh, you can pay six bucks for the cpu alone if you want like the chip board you have to pay 16 bucks and if you want the full dev kit you have to pay 49 bucks yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. Okay, let's round this out with um, something we kind of stumbled across, but we never covered this exact way of doing it, but it's Google Drive for Linux. It's here, unofficially, right? No? Maybe? What's this using? All right, basically, oh, see, I don't like this already. Golang and Mercurial. I hate you, Mercurial. You can <laughs> die in a fire. Hot, steamy fire of nope. <laughs> And, um, yeah, Racco on the uh, GitHubs with the drives. Let's go check that out. And apparently you can do this uh, with the text, right, Strider? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I've never tried it. I mean, this has been around for a while, and it doesn't seem to be very maintained. because. Uh, well, that's because they've updated it. Everything, the last commit's October 16th, man. How, how more updated do you want? <laughs> oh, so they have updated Recently, that's not a repo I've No, the drive because... itself. They, uh, right. Uh, right. Uh, yes. Yeah, I, I was looking at something and it hadn't been updated since early 2015. Um, yeah, I mean, that's nice. That's text-based. Uh, I personally use uh, a graphical interface for our drive, which is called uh, NSYNC, mm -hmm. uh, which I've managed to grab for free, but now you have to pay for it. So... And well, you can still use it for free. It's freemium right now. Oh, uh, do you do it is like some gamification? Do you have to earn tokens to? <laughs> <laughs> you don't earn tokens. You either use the free service with all its limitations, or you pay the money and get to use an actual Google Drive client on Linux. Hmm. I don't know. Um, we just thought we'd throw that in there because you know more options, more better. Because Google's like Google oh, Linux. What? What? No, we use Linux to make all of our money, but <laughs> no. <laughs> Supporting it? No. Nah. You can't have that drive, guys. Um, sorry. Uh, look at the monkey. Okay. Um, before we get out of here, we need a uh, couple of slices of pie. 
because yes, we love three of them, the Raspberries. Actually, yes. Mm -hmm. So Strider, uh, what's this all about? So someone has managed to get CPM. So this is a very old operating system, <laughs> way before uh, even MS DOS existed, and they, man they managed to get it running on bare metal Pi. Hmm. So it still runs an emulator for a Z80, uh, but there is no Linux OS being loaded here. It's basically the, the emulator right onto the, the SD card and running the CPM um, operating system. So they managed to get some Pascal environment running. And you couldn't do much more than that with the system anyway. Um, yeah, this is kind of neat. I mean, I wouldn't want to use CPM anyway, but if someone <laughs> managed to do the same thing for, let's say, Amiga OS, mm -hmm. I would be very much interested. No, I'm always blown away when he's like, oh, compiling. So I was like, oh, yeah, you got that running? Like, yeah, we got a running bare metal. And I was like, oh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's uh, it's definitely one of those projects that has the neat factor. Mm -hmm. Now, this next project, on the other hand, I, I mean, I get it in a way. It's a compute module you may remember back in 2014. Um, yes, 2014. Uh, the Raspberry Pi announced the compute module, which was basically a Raspberry Pi board, which looked like a RAM stick. And now you can add that compute module. Yes, that very same one right there. Uh, you can add that uh, compute module to a TV. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, so what's wrong with these people? Are these people that are just too good to tape their <laughs> Raspberry Pi to the back of their flat screen like a normal person? I mean, is yeah, that... you know, get one of those, just a regular Raspberry Pi, and tape it in there. It's fine. No one's gonna see it. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Including you, after you spend about three hours going, what did I do with that original Pi? It's like. Oh. Ah, uh, I know right. I know where it's at. No, it's it's kind of neat because now you can play RetroPie directly on your TV. You just have to plug in your USB Super Nintendo controller, and mm -hmm. there you go. And I don't know. We were looking still... at that. Yeah, I was like, well, what is this? This is the the um, it's the butter robot from Rick and Morty, man. <laughs> that the pie mo the module is like, what is my purpose? And you know, Rick's just like, you run Netflix. Um, <laughs> yeah. Basically, you run it runs Netflix or it runs. You can get clever with this and basically turn your TV into a an all-in-one, but it would be slow. Like let me point out, really, yes, really you, slow. Netflix on a Raspberry. I don't think that's a thing. So we're just using examples. Uh, Chromium. Chromium. You can do it with Chromium now. Mm, yeah, I think I so. If the the RM module is available on ARM, which I'm not entirely sure. You could install Cody. Cody. Oh, yeah, Cody could do it. Okay. Mm -hmm. See, I, I was just covering bases. Let's... <laughs> Spirit Rover, Mars Robot Kit for the final slice. This Mars Spirit Rover Kit for Raspberry is a great introduction to robotics and have little things crawling on the floor that you will eventually step on. LEDs! LEDs all over the place. <laughs> Guys, did I do a good job? Can I come home now? No, you're staying in Mars Curiosity. Aww. You're just gonna live there. A good rover would try extra hard. I see your doctor <laughs> girlfriend like bawling, and I'm like, what are you up to? She's like, it's so sad. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's definitely one of those, again, very, very neat projects. Like all the stories we mentioned in the slice of pie are very, very neat. And yeah, a, a good introduction to robotics is. You grab yourself a Raspberry Pi or a yeah. Pi Zero if you can find them in stock, and you try and build a robot out of it. Well, I mean, you, this one you can set it up with eternal navigation and all that fun stuff, yeah. and you know, just basic electronics. Plus, you get to make something that's cute for once. <laughs> it looks like it's sticking its green little tongue of um, PCB death at you, man. I mean, <laughs> don't you want to make one right now? Yeah, I mean, I, but I've looked at the the price and it's quite expensive. And I had an idea. If they they replace the the Pi with the, the chip. chip Pro, which is twenty bucks cheaper, I mean, they could cut the price down. 
I, I don't know. Every uh, time I look at this, I expect like the Asgard High Council, Council to show up. I'm like, dude, no, no. <laughs> well, uh, to address Strider's point, the thing is, with a chip pro, you mm -hmm. would need to do like all of the connections, all of the external connections for the peripherals and for driving the robot itself. Mm -hmm. You would need to build all of those yourself, or you would have to get the development board, which costs 50 bucks. So, yeah, yeah probably sure. the Raspberry Pi or the Raspberry Pi Zero are the better alternatives. Strider, look, you learned Python. Come on, now you learned it, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can just take your robot and plug it in your TV and play RetroPie again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could. It could be like, what's his name um, from the original NES? Um, the little robot, except this one uh, wants oh, yeah. to take over the galaxy by replicating. Um, Peter, did, do, do, did we get any feedback this week? Uh, we got a form of feedback, I guess it technically counts. Someone saw our video on YouTube and decided to let out uh, all of their inner feelings, as it were. They basically spilled their guts all over our YouTube comments. So how <laughs> do you get in great. contact with us? Yeah, if you want to do like uh, our feedbacker this week did, uh, you can go on over to ladiesgamecast.com, hit the contact button, fill out the form. Fill out the little capture thing. You can pick whether you want to send feedback for Linux Weekly Daily Wednesday or if you want to send some hate mail for Linux Gamecast Weekly. And our only teeny tiny bit of feedback this week came from the YouTube comment section. Like I mentioned, you can always leave us a comment on the other social networks. If you track down the original post, we'll see it there probably. Mm -hmm. Maybe. <laughs> so this week, the black... Uh, <clears throat> black Ewid? Black Quid? Cool, cool, cool. Can... Like you would. I think that, yeah, no. Okay, uh, uh, it... uh, hang on. I, I, I'm going to take a swing at this first para okay. paragraph of this <laughs> wall of text. Then you can, <laughs> because this is my favorite one. Um, <clears throat> I find it somehow funny to see such capitalistic, most likely Republican thinking people talk about Linux. It's like seeing Nixon gets... It's an interesting way to spend on Tristan. And planned economy from communism. So you already know this is going to be good, ladies and gentlemen. Just go ahead and get the popcorn. We're just getting started. Um, I, first of all, I, I love... Because um, later on, trust me, this was just like a wall of text that we've condensed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, it's like, you're American's way of... And it was like, you, you do, do understand all three of us are from Europe, yeah. But, well, technically, I'm the only one still in Europe. Right. And, <laughs> oh, no, we've been polluted, Pedro. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, seriously. He goes, oh, Americans often use Linux just to drive as much proprietary software as possible so they can save the money. Where is the, uh, where's the Libra spirit? Where's all of that? It, why are you not supporting people who use, like, actual FOSS software and linux as it should be mm -hmm. uh <laughs> yes i mean no no we don't man i've only been promoting linux and i've only been a linux zealot since 1995 you're right i should have started 93 like a real you probably don't even read linux do you <laughs> <laughs> probably not but yeah there was one of the comments where he actually brought up trump <laughs> and that's just about the point where i stopped reading because first of all i live in europe Ven and uh, Matthew are actually living in the U.S. right now, so they are <sighs> the, the, the only ones. Yeah, they are the only ones who would be caring about U.S. politics at this point. You, on the other hand, no, dude, don't you understand? Uh, U.S. politics are contagious. This guy only has two little shoe boxes he can put people in, and if yeah. it doesn't fit, his brain explodes. Yeah, it's the whole black and white mentality and that's racist then again the bipartisan system in the u.s is actually fostering to that kind of culture but you've made me talk about politics f you f you right up the a nah man I, i'm not even gonna say that see at first i mean i sent the message to our little group chat and i was like <laughs> wow pedro because you know last week pedro put on his donald trump hat um <laughs> which you know intelligent people realize is a bit and I was like, you, you, I just typed, I was like, you, you gotta start wearing that hat more often. We can like, <laughs> then I actually went back like two days later, I managed to cut error correcting off in my brain so I could read this rambling. And I was like, now then, I don't even think it made it to the Trump hat. <laughs> nope. 
<laughs> he, uh, you posted a, <laughs> you posted in the little hangout we have. You posted, oh yeah, that could basically just be summed up into. <laughs> I don't know, man. Uh, you always probably, uh, I don't know, man. Uh, wow, wow, wow. Uh, yeah, I'm curious. I'm curious what caused this comment. I mean, we talk about too much. That's a good idea, Strider. <laughs> That's a really good lack question. of free I mental health care in North America, yeah. son. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, I mean, we don't talk a lot about closed source software I mean, no. we do once in a while but it's all run like most of the software we run is still open source and i don't oh, know man i wait. was listening i said i it. said open source and not free software that's why oh man it's floss and i was like dude strider comes from france he's a socialist come on he hates <laughs> businesses well actually a lot of well, people who moved leave, out of yeah. uh, petty uh, they they like businesses that's why they moved because france really doesn't like yep you know. <laughs> yeah look at him Oh, <laughs> socialist. Oh, the socialist lutris. But that's going to do it for Linux Weekly Daily Wednesday. Almost slipped up. We will return next week around 3 p.m. Eastern Time. It's been beautiful. Um, Vince Stone, if you want to scream at me, I'm at Vince Stone on the Twitter Nets Plus. Vince Stone on G Plus. Oh, yeah. Unified friendly. By the way, patreon.com forward slash lutris. Because this psychopath, he's got a yeah. project going. And he wants oh, to yeah, help yeah. out the Linux it's, gaming community. It's almost here. I mean, just a couple more bucks, and there's going to be a new Linux gaming show uh, once a week. It's probably a very short one, but uh, yeah, I have planned for that. And it's very close to being done. Do it for the laughs alone. Strider filling 30 minutes by himself is just... <laughs> Just throw money at this. I want this to be a thing. <laughs> yes, definitely do it. Uh, you can always find me at unaccounted for on twitter at the or burning for the on google plus but i i i want to see that show strider <laughs> make it i want to <laughs> you can also already have some previews because i've made a couple of videos uh for literacy before so mm -hmm. uh, i mean i hope it will be a bit better but still to tell the people where they can find you so i can get off the shot um, so on Strike or at on um, Twitter or Matthew Commodo on Google Plus. All right, lovely, beautiful party people. We will return. Until then, bye bye. But, oh, bye. make sure you give uh, Strider some more wet stinky so he can actually get that poster up on the wall. Probably. Girl, I <laughs> want to yes. spend all your yeah. money. <laughs> 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 Burn.